I'm Ms. Artastic again. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about classroom management tips for our teachers. So let's dive in on this episode and let's make some art. management so here we go um, the very first thing we're going to talk about is establishing your clear expectations so that means that you're really going to want to establish some clear expectations for um, the quality of work that you expect your students to produce so um, what a complete art should look like what you're looking for um, that doesn't mean that they all should be the same or at the same level, but you're looking for students to try their own personal best. Um, you're looking for uh, set expectations for work time. What does your work time look like in your classroom? Is it loud? Is it kids talking? Are they allowed to get up and move? Um, is there a seating plan or not? So thinking about what that looks like. Um, is Speaking of seating, you're gonna decide on what seating looks like. So is it a... Um, flexible seating classroom where you have different arrangements for students to sit at, stand at, um, maybe there's some beanbag area chairs, like they can have a carpet with some beanbags and get to work on a clipboard, um, or is there like lower seating, so lower tables and higher tables, um, so you can kneel at some tables or sit on like some ball chairs or um, maybe it's just stools versus chairs. Uh, whatever it is, so you can think about flexible seating and if you're also gonna have a seating plan or if you're going to allow students to pick their own seats and what that would look like. Um, and then what it would look like if it doesn't work out and they're not making, you know, sometimes our friends are good friends, but maybe they're not the best person to work with, right? They're not good working friends, right? Because we chat too much um, sometimes with our friends. So, so thinking about what those expectations look like. You also want to have some expectations for cleanup um, what that looks like, is it everybody is picking their favorite job and everything has to be done in five minutes or is everybody going to have their own job and they rotate through the job list and you're going to spend that time planning that out, so thinking about what that looks like, um, how they enter the room, um, what listening looks like and collaboration looks like, so all these things are things that you want to really set clear expectations for um, and this is not to overly like the very first day of school or even the first week. You're going to talk about it and then you're going to model, practice, and reinforce for the first two months so that way you're going to have a nice, strong, um, well-oiled machine throughout the year, hopefully. Um, that is the goal anyways, right? Sometimes there are elements that are completely out of your control. So there's that, um, but that is the, the aspirations and I think it's always a good goal to go for, right? Um, the next is to create a positive environment. So the next thing is just think about how we can be proactive with our classroom management. So we're going to have a proactive style, a proactive approach, right? The first thing was to set your clear expectations. Now you're going to create the positive environment, um, praise students and build relationships, right? You're going to create those connections, right? Um, not only with all your students, but especially with students that maybe show unexpected behavior or a little bit challenging. Um, then those ones I like to focus on quite a bit. Um, and just finding out what they're interested in, um, what they like, um, and then finding that key that's going to open the door to their world so that way you can help them and that they're going to trust you, right? Because you've got to cut. It's not expected that students automatically respect and trust you. Um, I think that's kind of an old way of thinking. Um, I think that we should think, in my opinion, that we need to earn students' respect and trust. So, um, why is that authority figure pushing down? And we don't know um, everybody's own personal experiences or own personal lives. Uh, and the things that they have maybe gone through or experience or see or their relationships outside of school. Um, so we're going, I think it's good to just really establish a connection and find out what key is going to unlock the door into earning their trust, right? And earning their respect. And then you can also use that to help plan. So if you know your students' likes and their interests, and you have that positive environment, you took the time to get to know them, 
and also share yourself with them, right? Like you don't need to be a robot up there, like share that you have cats or dogs or you're really obsessed with frogs, whatever it is, right? Because then they might relate to you and they'll be like, wow, I see, I get that, I get my teacher, I know what they're like, I know they're not just a robot parroting in front of the classroom, right? I, I know that they are human, they don't sleep under the desk. And sometimes kids don't realize that too, right? So you gotta explain that. Um, and then you can use, again, these ideas to help you plan your year, right? So you can plan your art projects around some student-centered focused work. All right, so number three is to organize and declutter your classroom. Um, I know that seems like a weird thing for classroom management tips, but often I think it's when it's too chaotic and too busy and there's you don't know where everything is or where it's supposed to go, that's going to lead to more things unraveling in your classroom. So being proactive, like having a nice structured booking classroom, you know where things go, everything is clear and labeled, students are going to be able to help themselves and be a little bit more independent, right? So being proactive, there you can allow them to be more independent and be helpful. Um, versus like having no clue where anything is because probably you don't know where anything is if it's a mess also. All right, so my question for you before we continue is what are your classroom management questions? What do you have? What do you want to know when it comes to classroom management as a somebody in an art classroom, as an art teacher, as an art sub, whatever it is, let me know in the comment section below the video. Number four is to have a calming corner. So this is a place for students to go with to um, maybe to regulate their emotions. Maybe if they got out of the green zone, they're into the yellow, they know they're approaching red, they can go where they are in the red zone. Then we can go to the common corner to really just regulate our emotions. You could put timers there so they only get a certain amount of minutes to be there. Um, and then they have to, so their job when they're there is to go from the red zone or being a little bit angry or upset, whatever their emotions are, really excited and then try to calm their bodies and get back to a mindset or a place emotion why emotionally where that they are able to work again so you need to and then they need to slowly go from maybe the first time if it's depending on the student they might need a little bit more time and then you slowly shrink that time allotted for doing this approach right i like to put calming um critters or toys like some fidgets there, um, maybe you just have some those earmuffs to block out sound so they can kind of just self-regulate a little more. Um, maybe you have a couple bean bags um, or just a desk and, and uh, I don't like the desk thing because it feels like more of like a punishment. So like, I'm not really sure like I like to put a desk in the corner unless it's like super cute because like a lamp. And so um, you want to create some routines and this is a back to school sort of thing. Over the first couple months, I implement these. So it takes time, right? You can't just shove it all at them in the first day or weeks because they're not going to remember. Like, I can't remember if it's that much, right? So thinking about just breaking it up um, and explaining explicitly and practicing, right? Lots of practice over and over and over and over again, even in the older grades, over and over again. What setting up looks like, um, what take down and putting away or clean up looks like, um, what um, lining up looks like where if you have line up in the hallway what should that look like while you're waiting for the other class to leave um, are you high-fiving everybody on their way out like we gotta think about what might happen right kind of be like one step ahead so you can um, approach these situations right uh, and and uh, try to make these things as smooth as possible um, I think that is a great as a great idea Right? So just being thinking about how to be proactive of what might happen and how you can navigate around these situations. Um, I think to really train my students to be more independent and be helpers. Like I always had students even um, organizing my hand in folders so at the end of the class. They would go in there. I had a couple students who liked to organize. So I would be like, oh, they're like, you know, the kids who are like, can I help you? Yes, you can. And here is your new job. Please. This is your job. If you would like to do it, if you don't, please let me know. You're not forced to do it. Um, but if you want to, you can take responsibility and go in, find everything for this class, put a paper clip on it, and stick it on my desk. So that way it's already one thing already bundled up for me to stick into my, you know, for me to go assess, right? And it's not all mixed up with all the other classes coming in because I always just had one hand in bin. I guess you could have multiple hand in bins, but it depends on how much space you have, right? Because that can get a lot. Hand in, hand out for every single thing. I don't know. It just depends on your space. 
Um, I never worked in a humongous classroom, so I didn't have that much space. Anyways, so the um, other thing is that you could also have kids trained to do setup and take down all the materials, right? They could prep for the next class. If you have everything organized and these and, and in little bins, right? All your meetings in tiny little bins, then they can just be like, okay, so and so, I'm the next class, the trays, so table trays, you can have a tray for each table. The table trays are gonna need oil pastels and watercolor paints. And then you can be like, okay, and then they can go grab one of the oil pastel containers, because I like to just shove them out of their boxes all into one container and everybody at the table can share, right? Lots in one container. Um, it works out. I don't wanna, because it takes a lot to shove them back in the boxes. And then honestly, what's gonna happen is all of a sudden, one box is gonna have all the reds and blues and yellows, and the other box is gonna be like browns and blacks and pink, like some randoms, because everybody's, you know, put them in the wrong spot. They're never gonna be the same. <laughs> you might as well shove them in a bin and they can share. Um, and then, anyways, and then they can grab all the watercolors, put one on each table, boom, you're done. And then it's all. Everything's labeled, everything goes, goes where it goes, and it's all in pre-designed containers, just like dollar store containers, but then they're all going to go back into the oil pastel, bigger bin, rubber made afterwards, and you're done. So just thinking about what kind of routines you really want to build um, through the year, um, and how that's gonna help you with some time management, and also classroom management, because everybody's gonna be busy. They got a job to do, and they gotta get out. So, yeah. All right, number six, uh, oh, also the kids who might show unexpected behavior might also be good people to give jobs because it gives them a little bit of a sense of responsibility and then they're busy instead of having enough free time to go do things that are unexpected. Yeah, that's a tip as well. <laughs> All right, number six is build positive relationships to get to know your students and support them for a highest chance of success. So uh, again, Building relationships and connections with students, really getting taking the time to get to know them. I like to float around and sit at tables while they're working and then work on something throughout the day. It'd be the same same thing that I'm working on throughout the different classes. Um, but I will sit and I'll work as well so you can see that I'm also creating uh, and doing something similar as them. And then, um, but my own version obviously. And then I can also be talking with them, getting to know them, chatting them up, helping them, supporting them. Um, asking them while I'm helping them with their work. Hey, which, how was your weekend? Blah, blah, blah. You know, uh, what do you like? What are you doing after school? Like, what kind of sports, I mean, like, what do you, what kind of after school activities do you do? Those kinds of things. Um, what, what movies are you interested in? What book are you reading? Whatever it is, you can chat them up and get to know them a little bit. That, again, was going to inform your future lessons. Um, and I think that that's just a way to get to know them. Um, but also create that connection, right? Because then they're going to know, that's a no trust factor, right? If you get to know, if they know you, they're going to trust you, they're going to respect you, and they're going to buy in and want to be in your classroom, which is essentially what we're trying to achieve, right? We, we want our students to want to be in our classrooms and wanting to make art, and that's just one way that's going to help support that is really focusing on building relationships and connections with students. It's not going to solve all problems. There are some things that you're not going to be able to solve. It might have happened at home, or it might have happened right before they came in the door. You're, it is out of your control. It has nothing to do with you and your classroom. You're never going to be able to solve this problem, but it's, it's erupting in your classroom. And that's going to happen, and building relationships is not going to solve all problems, but it's going to be a proactive approach in classroom management to give you a much better chance for success. And this is the idea, right? It's not going to be like, Oh, well, you didn't build relationships. That's why you're having problems. No, you can still have problems in your classroom and students might show unexpected behavior, even if you do all of the above. And that happens as well. And sometimes that message is not communicated by districts, but that's the truth. Um, sometimes like it's blaming, they're blaming you. Sometimes it feels like, <laughs> but that might not be the case, right? Sometimes there are just things out of our control, but at least you can say, I did this, 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 and this, and we're kind of running into this issue. So now what are we gonna do, right? Because now you have done all of your part. You have been trying very hard. You have already started from, before there was even any, an issue, before there was an issue, you were already being proactive about it. And so, and that's a great thing to say on a job interview, right? Anyways, if you are looking for more Progee, 
professional development workshops on this. Um, I do offer a professional development course called Art Teacher Academy. It is my professional development program and provides hours of professional development. You do get a certificate at the end for completion and I cover other things from how to plan your art lessons, how to plan for the year, how to write art lesson plans, how to do your scope and sequence. I provide all the templates for it, um, how to plan art lessons, how to do community builders, how to uh, create relationships in your classroom, how to cover um, SEL, social emotional learning, how to cover, um, teach different mediums, how to um, do classroom management and so much more. I'll give you all my systems to help you with time management and planning to help you have a successful year in art. And they will also give you your professional development hours and you'll get a certificate at the end for completion. So if you want to learn more about Art Teacher Academy, you can click the QR or scan the QR code on the screen um, or click the link below the video to check out Art Teacher Academy. Your next video to watch is Spring Art Lesson Ideas. You can click that link above or in the description below the video, and I'll see you in that episode. Please make sure you like and subscribe this channel so you can help me continue to create these videos for you. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.